All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. So again, this is our fourth part of our Canva series. We've done uh, some basics. We've gone over social media video, and now today we're gonna be talking about print marketing. So Canva is an online tool where you can use templates, photos, and all sorts of other materials to create a variety of content, including flyers, posters, business cards, brochures, any sort of print material you might need for your business. And there are even printing options through Canva if you need to get something printed, kind of like when you would go to FedEx or Staples and get stuff printed that way or you know, at home, but uh, Canva also has some options available that you can look at. So like I said, we're gonna look at creating some of those common print materials that you'll see, business cards, stickers, flyers, anything like that. We'll go over some of those templates that Canva has and the resources available. This will look very similar to uh, the other classes that we've done because it's a lot of the same steps, but I'm gonna show you the templates that they have specifically for these resources. Let's go ahead and open Canva. All right, so I've already logged into Canva, and if you've been with us in any of our other classes, this will look pretty familiar to you, but this is the, the dashboard for Canva. And uh, once you've logged in, you'll see your main uh, screen here with all of your most recent designs. This is a library account, so we have a, a few projects that we work on using Canva, so you'll see a lot of items here. This is where all of your recent designs will be, and um, a lot of the templates, uh, blank templates that Canva has in place, you can find here just on this homepage. But since we're working on print materials, I want to show you where some of those templates are specifically for those materials. So on the left hand toolbar, you'll see templates. And there's a few uh, options here on the sidebar. You'll also see here in the middle, there's print products. So uh, we can click on print products and it will show you a, a few to choose from, including some promotional materials, physical materials, like what you could put on a water bottle or a bag, uh, but also decals, envelopes, um, tote bags, calendars, business cards. There's so many, so many options. And um, I'm just going to choose we're gonna select banner just to see what those templates look like. So you can see they have over 18,000 templates that you could look at, get inspiration from, edit, anything like that. And these are all banners. So there's, again, a lot to choose from. It's uh, one of the great things about Canva is there's a, a, a wealth of content for you to uh, pick through and see what you like and edit to your delight and uh, make it fit for your business or your need. So I'm just gonna choose one. Go with this one. And so it'll open up, it'll give you some more options, more things you can explore. So let's see. And when you open, when you click what size, it gives you some options here for sizing. So we're gonna stick with small. And it even asks what materials you want because this is a banner, that's why it's asking. But if you're just doing even like a flyer or something, it would just be regular paper. Uh, we're gonna stick with one and we're gonna customize it. We'll come back to this print section in a minute. We're gonna focus on editing first. So this is the main editor which again, would look familiar if you've opened up Canva or even seen our previous classes, uh, pretty common. It looks just like all the other ones. Uh, this is your canvas. This is the, the template that we just saw on the, the main uh, template list. And um, over here on the left-hand toolbar, I wanna make sure under Brand Hub that I've chosen my fake business sneak for sneakers. That way I have my logos and everything 
ready to go. And uh, we went over the brand hub in the first class. You can look at that recording on the library's YouTube channel to learn more about the brand hub. But that's basically where we have all of our logos, colors, and fonts already picked out so that it's super easy to make this content. Love it. So um, there's not a whole lot to change here to fit my need as, you know, a fake um, fake business for sneakers, but I do want, you know, the fonts to look the same or to fit, you know, uh, the business and then maybe add the logo somewhere. So I want this font to change. So like in our other classes, in order to do that, you can uh, select the text box. And when you select any of these, any of these functions, these tools right above the editor are going to change depending on what you've selected. And you know you've selected it when there's a purple bounding box around it. That's how you know what you're editing right now. So these are some of the text editing tools. So I'm going to go over here to the font names. And you can see I've got my font families for sneak over here. Okay, so that looks a little strange, doesn't it? Which makes me think, well, first off, there's a lot of letter spacing here. So this is another one of the editing tools is about spacing. And so the letter spacing is how much space is in between each letter. So of course you can change that there. Same with line spacing, but that would be if you have multiple rows of text. Um, this here is selected, so it's all uppercase but this font is actually already uppercase, so that's not an issue. Um, let's see if I fiddle with the size of it, if it'll look better. What if it's just, it's such a big piece of material. I think it said it's like two feet by four feet. And this is such a, yeah, it's just because it's such a small font. <laughs> so I'm gonna fiddle around with some of the sizing and the spacing and, I mean, that can take a while, depending on what uh, what you want it to look like, how you like it. It might even look better bigger. I like that. But I am going to shift it up a little bit so it's not on top of the work here. Oh. Trying to select the right thing. There we go. And so I'm going to want this to match. That way it's all on brand. So I'm going to change the font again, which means I'm probably going to need to change the size again. I think that is the letter spacing is what we're going to want to fiddle with. So it kind of matches like a nice balance on here. And then I want this, the word sale, to be our, the font we've been using for the same business. So this one's too big. So we're going to go down a size, a few sizes probably. Not too many sizes. Mm. I think that'd look good. I like how it was placed on top of it. I think that's really fun. And you can see those um, purple guidelines that are popping up. Uh, if you see the vertical one, that means it is in the center vertically. And then the horizontal one means that this is in the center horizontal. So this is actually in the very, very center of this entire print piece. So those guidelines are really helpful. And I've brought it up in the other classes too, and I should have done that to start with. Speaking of guidelines, under file here, view settings, you can show rule rulers and guides. This just gives you an idea if you're wanting something in a certain location, maybe there's some print boundaries you need to worry about. Having the rulers and guides up is really helpful. And you can even pull guides. So if I'm hovering on this ruler on the left side here, I can click and drag 
a guide on here. If I was wanting something to line up just so, or to be in a, in a certain place, I could leave a guide and line things up with it. And then if I no longer need it, I can click and drag it back off of the canvas. Those guides are really helpful if you need um, any sort of uh, alignment like that. So always good to have those up just in case. Um, it looks like the end of season is a lot closer to the word summer than this is. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit so it looks a bit more balanced. There we go. And then I want to throw our logo on somewhere. So I'm going to click on, I'm in the brand hub here on the left. I'm going to click on our logo. That way we could throw it on here. That way it's on brand, people know who is throwing this end of season summer sale. It's not just random, any store could be doing it. And you could fiddle around with where you want it. You definitely want it legible so that people can see it. Um, See, do I want that white box? See, with all of these templates, you can edit them. You're like, oh, I'm not sure I want that white box. Cool, I just deleted it. No problem. And if you wanted a different color box, or if you maybe you don't want these like palm leaves, I think is what they are. We can even look through the um, the different elements that Canva has and see what else we could put there. I'll show you that in just a second. I just want to select all of these, scooch them down. Can you see that purple bounding box that's around the entire image? It's like cutting through the palm. That's its um, Canva's estimation of a safe printing area, just in case um, wherever you get something printed, maybe these edges, they're like the margins of a Word document. They might get cut off just depending on the printer. So this would be like your safe areas within this purple bounding box. And that would just be up to however you get it printed. So now we have that, it's kind of cute. But again, if maybe you weren't liking the palm leaves or you just wanted something different that said summer, on the left-hand side, we have elements and we've been in and out of this across our workshops, but this is where all of the um, graphics, animations, video, audio, all of that that Canva has available is in this elements folder. And then of course, just as a caveat, depending on what plan you have, depends on what you have access to. We are using a pro Teams account, which is paid for, but there are still a lot of resources available in a free account. So up to you and um, I'll show you again kind of what that looks like. So if I'm gonna search for something, um, I'm just gonna throw out summer since that's sort of the vibe we're going for. And it's showing graphics, photos, and video. And I want to look at photos in particular. So we have a bunch of different photos, and there's probably tens of thousands that fall under summer. We're not going to be able to look through them all. Again, that's another, uh, uh, another way you could sort of fall into a black hole here on Canva is trying to find the perfect anything. But one way to note if it is um, an item available on a free account versus a pro account you'll notice these little crowns. And when you hover over it, it says pro. That's available with a pro account. If it doesn't have it, it's available with a free account. So there's still plenty of, of options for free accounts as well as a pro account. Up to you. Uh, but that's always just something to, to note just in case you're like, oh, I really like that, but it's a pro feature and you have a free account. So there are all sorts of options here. So let's see. Plenty of these scream summer, that's for sure. Like, ooh, I kind of like these these leaves a little bit more, but I don't know, is pink more summer than yellow? <laughs> There's a lot of things you could ask yourself during a design process, of course. Let's see, what does this one look like? So I'm gonna click and drag this over here. It's a bit more fruit related, but yeah, I'm okay. And the fun talk and sunglasses. So lots of options here. 
depending on what you want to look at. And um, one thing I do want to show you, I need to find like a good image that I can show you this editing tool with. Let's see. I'll show you this one. So this is a flamingo on some sand with a blue background. And maybe you're like, oh, I really like this whole flamingo setting. I don't want the blue background. So one feature available with Canva, I'm pretty sure it's only in the pro versions, but is a, a very handy tool, uh, is a background remover. So I've selected this image. And again, the tools up here have changed because this is an image, not text. So there's different editing tools. I can click on edit image. And oh, yeah, there it is. So background remover. And yes, it is a pro feature. It's got that little crown next to it. So when I click on it, it's going to do its little magic here. Might take a second. And it has, well, it has removed the background, including the sand. So it, it's not, you know, foolproof here, but you can erase more, restore some. Like if I hit restore, I can sort of, you know, go around it with this little brush here and, and fix it up. I don't remember where all the sand was. Off the top of my head, but pretty close. So this is a, a really neat tool. Sometimes it works effortlessly. It kind of just depends on what's in the background, how well it works. Um, there's similar tools in Photoshop. Uh, this just does it pretty much without you needing to do anything. Um, but just like in Photoshop, you need to touch up the edges and, and see if it actually worked to what you like. Um, but it is a really neat tool that you have access to. Um, but yeah, you can even go back through and then tidy it up. So you're like, I didn't want the blue background. And you can even zoom in and edit even further. But just for the sake of this class, because it's only an hour long and we're already 20 minutes in, I'm not going to go into uh, complete detail here. But I'll go back. You can see it's already. Um, adjusted to what I edited. And that kind of looks like what they did here with these palms. It could either have been uploaded to Canva without a background or a background had been removed. Those are different options that are available. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I was just trying to show you how that editing tool works, but I don't necessarily want it on there. So you know what? I'm fine with how this looks. I think this looks great as is. And I'm not going to go deep into uh, all the different photos I could have used, like flip-flops would be great though. This is a sneaker shop, so uh, maybe a sneaker on here somewhere would be better, but I think this looks fine as is. Uh, one thing I wanna show you that is a really neat feature is resize. So again, this is a banner that we made and I think it was like two feet by four feet, something like that. Oh, even bigger, 72 inches by 36 inches. <laughs> We have a quick question here, yeah. back to something that you briefly touched on. Um, they wanted to go back over the reducing the space gap between the letters. Yeah, for sure. So when I click on a text field and those editors come up, uh, this one right here that's got lines with the up and down arrow, when you hover over it, it says spacing. And you have letter spacing and line spacing. So letter spacing is the space between each of the letters. So when you drag it one way, they get closer. You drag it the other way, they get further apart. And then line spacing works if there's more than one line of text. So let me make a text box here just so I could show you. Let's move it out of the way. And make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. That's not much bigger, is it? It's a giant manner. Okay, so this is just the standard spacing between letters and the standard spacing between lines. So I'm gonna add a line. So 
you can see the space in between the lines here. So if I just select the text box and I go back to that editing tool, I can then adjust the line spacing so that the lines are a bit neater and closer together. I mean, that's a, a lot of space in between where it was naturally. Sometimes you want to tighten it just to fit in a certain spot. Definitely don't really want it overlapping because you can't read it. But that's what the line spacing does. And then letter spacing again, you can spread it out. You can make it even tighter. But again, legibility is a, a smart feature. So I just want to double check, you know, print out a, a, a draft of it, make sure people can read it. But that's the, the letter and the line spacing and how that works. Because each of these are different text boxes here, you're not going to have to worry about the line spacing as much as the letter spacing. Hopefully that answers that question. And then I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. All right, so I'm going to show you. Oh, and um, just to go over it again, this is saving as I work, which is really nice, but you can always double check by going to file and save. And it says all changes saved. Never hurts to check. <laughs> uh, but say I want to resize this to be a flyer or a poster that I can have up in my business. I can click on this resize button. And this is another pro feature, but it is a really good one depending on the amount of content that you make. It's just going to cut down on uh, how much work you need to do. So under resize, I want, let's see, if I can find it real quick. Let me just type in flyer. So they have some different sized flyers, but let's go with a landscape one. So this is already landscape. That'll work out. So you have options to just resize it, which would take this file and resize it, and you would no longer have your banner version. Or you can copy and resize, which is what I want to do, because I want to keep my banner as is, but then make a flyer version as well. So it's kept the same sort of like ratios for everything based on where it was. So you're going to have to make some tweaks. It basically just took the content and put it onto the size you wanted. So I'm going to move this leaf here, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Same with this one over here and make it a little bit bigger. That's what all these little things are in the corners. You can adjust the sizing. And then the same with all of these features here. I want to make them all bigger. So if I just select them all, I can just drag the corner, make everything bigger. And then I want to put it back in the center where it was. So you can see those guides again. So now we are in the center. And now all that, I mean, we didn't do much work. We made some edits based on a template. It's now a flyer with minimal effort involved. Otherwise, you would have to create a new document that is a flyer and apply everything. Uh, you might be able to copy and paste over, uh, but this just does all the work for you. So it is a handy tool. Um, there's not much else I want to really edit here. The whole idea is that if I say with this banner, I got it printed and it's maybe out at the corner of the shopping strip where my business is so that people driving by see that there's a sale going on. Well, I probably also want a flyer up at uh, my checkout counter or throughout the store on different displays. That's where this would come in. And whether you print it at home or go through a printer, FedEx, Staples, whoever, Canva also has that. So I'm just showing you this as an option. Uh, it's not a free service. It, I mean, getting something printed from a company is never free. <laughs> uh, it's just one way you can easily get your file from point A to point B. So um, there's actually just a button at the top that says print flyers. And it was actually already here because we had it, uh, the flyer open. 
And so you can see it just gives you different options you pick from of the paper type you want, the finish, how many, and it goes ahead and gets you uh, a total. And then we're not actually going to be printing this, but just to show you what it looks like. Uh, we'll make it glossy just to just for fun. If we're just putting this up around the store, mm, pen's probably fine. I don't know. It's up to you and what your needs are. Uh, and then you would hit continue. And then it just asks for more questions. Um, it thinks this background is low quality. So it'd be up to you if you want to change it or not. You can download the PDF, which is um, just the file type that you would probably need if you were sending it to get printed anywhere. Uh, and then you would check out and it would it would go through. Uh, if I recall, it can tell you local places that it prints through or I think they can even deliver it to you. I think they have options like that. So just know that Canva has this service available up to you if you would want to use it. You definitely don't have to, uh, especially if you have your own printer and can just print it on your own. Uh, you have some options there. Under share in the top right corner, that's how you would download it. Uh, that's also where you could click print your design. So there's lots of options on how you can get it printed, <laughs> uh, but you would wanna download it. So if I click on download, the file type you're gonna want for a flyer is a PDF for printing. Uh, a PDF, just like um, any document you might receive uh, you know, via email or anything like that, that's non-editable typically, uh, depending on what software you have. And then they even have uh, color profiles for if you're just using it digitally or if you're getting it printed just because of the ink in a printer. And then you would just download it, save it, you know, to your desktop, to whatever your files are, print it from there, send it to Staples, you know, however, however you would need to use it after the fact. Um, I definitely want to save it as a PDF though. Uh, so that's the resize. And you could even, uh, just to sort of go back a little bit to other ways you can resize this, you're like, okay, well, it's a flyer, it's a banner. You're probably going to also want to use that on social media. You can even resize it as an Instagram post or a Facebook post, anything like that. And it just resizes it to the platform you're choosing. Let's just, uh, say Facebook real quick, copy and resize. There, it's done the work for you. And you can, again, adjust as much as you want to adjust it. Um, but then it's it's ready to go for you to schedule and put up on your social media channels as well as get it printed. So, I mean, that is just, it is a really neat tool. So that's an example of a couple of print pieces and how to resize them. Uh, I'm going to go back to the templates here. Close out of that one. I want to show you. Um, let's look under cards and invitations. I'm trying to see what they've got here. Maybe you're having a, I don't know, a grand opening or some sort of event. So yeah, they have 31,000 templates for invitations. So you got plenty to plenty to browse through. Um, let's see, these all look kind of cool. Let's grab this one. I like the the text. That's fun. So I want to customize the template. Of course. Again, because it's a, a print material, it's already going to open up how you want to get it printed. So you can just close that. So let's edit this a little bit. It's going to be very similar to what we just did. Uh, I find a lot of what I do on Canva is, is re repetitive, uh, but that's OK. Uh, we want to celebrate maybe like, I don't know, a grand opening. <laughs> let's go with that. So not a 16th birthday. And we'll just keep that text here because we don't really 
I don't really need to put in any information because it doesn't exist. But we do want to be somewhat on brand. So I'm going to grab go to my brand hub. This will probably be a great opportunity to use the white logo instead of the back background, the black background logo, because the background is already black. And you want to be able to see it. Let's just have to make a bunch of adjustments here. You can see that um, that guide popping up again. That way it's centered. I'm going to select these and move them up a little bit. Give us a little bit of room here. And here in grand opening, it is two lines. So that would be another opportunity if you wanted to mess with the line spacing. You could play around with that and get it a little bit closer together. And it looks okay. You can even do the same down here. So you can see on these letters, they're kind of like neon. It's actually an effect that this text has on it. So I've selected this text box so you can see. And you go to effects, and they have one that's called neon. And you can just change the in intensity of it. Um, and then the color choice is made actually, you see under this A, it has a color bar. You can choose the color. So I can change it. It's a different neon. I don't know. I like the green. We'll keep it. Maybe change this one so it's all green. I do like green, so it's a, a preference for me. <laughs> uh, up to you, but it's just a, a fun little text effect that, that they have. And again, that's just under the effects on this little text editor bar. There are a few you can choose from. So Join us to celebrate actually doesn't have any effects on it, but if you wanted to choose something, I wouldn't put too many different ones on one piece of material just to uh, let the neon sort of shine on its own. I mean, it will just by being so bright, but um, it could be that you have uh, maybe a lighter background with light text and you need it to pop off of the page a little bit. You can add a shadow or even a background. These are all options. Like if I click on background, uh, it has roundness for the shape of the, the actual background. And, and you can kind of see, let me zoom in. It's a little bit easier. There we go. You can see it as I change the roundness. It changes on the actual background over here. Spread is how far it goes from the text itself. And then transparency is how well you can see through it or not. So if I change the color of this, I will just choose paint just to be able to show you. So the text is yellow, the background is pink. You can see it really well. And uh, that is just how you would change that um, background. That way you'd be able to see text very clearly. It's not really necessary on, on this application to have it, but there are times maybe you've got text over a photo that you need it to uh, pop a little bit more to make it legible. Anytime you have text, you want it, people to be able to read it. So, um, so it's just, you can see it's an invitation. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit busy for my taste, but if you're having a grand opening, you want people to have all the information that they need and they know where to go. And we could even just get rid of this if you're wanting a little bit more space. You want people to come party. You want them to know it is a grand opening. Maybe if you're doing any sort of big sale or um, some sort of freebie or like, you know, the first 50 people get a free pair of socks. I don't know. Uh, that's something you could put on here as well. 
So this would just be an example of an invitation using the templates that they have, which is uh, really handy. And again, you could always go into elements like, oh, I'm not really sure about these stars. You could always change them out. So you could go to uh, the elements area. I've just searched star and I'm gonna look under their graphics. Um, there are some animated ones, but that's really only gonna be if this is going online and you want it to have some sort of animated feature. But uh, otherwise you want more of a static one. And if you're looking specifically for ones that are not animated in the search bar here, there is a filter within that search bar when you click on it. You can choose static, which means it is not an animated feature. You can also choose that if it's free or if it's included in the pro version. So you wouldn't even have to look for items that have that little crown on it. You could choose to only show free items. And that's what it does. It filters all the other ones out. You don't need them. So there are um, some really cool ones even without having to pay for them. So if I've clicked on it, it's going to pop up on here and then I would just resize it to what I like. So maybe I just want a little variety in my stars. I don't know. So I still have it selected and it's currently a white star, which I mean, to be honest, I'm fine with, but to go with this little color palette here, we'll just choose pink, why not? And then if I wanted more of these, since it's still selected, I can either right click and choose duplicate, duplicate, or hovering up top is duplicate and then delete, and I can just hit duplicate. And then I can click and drag it wherever I want it to. I can then change the color, and then I can do it over and over and over again, however many I want on here. Oh, we'll just throw one over here. Up to you. I'm like this space up here is looking a little empty. And then just to kind of balance it out. Let's toss one up here too. And this is another instance where you could just save it. Maybe you've got some cardstock at home that you're just going to print it. Um, you could get them printed, of course, through Canva. Maybe you want this to actually be a, a newsletter instead. That's where that resize would come into play. And you could look up newsletter, email newsletter. Um, and it just gives you some different dimensions that would be what it thinks you might want. Um, so those are ways you could resize it into different applications. Maybe you want it to be a poster instead or in addition to. So it just be, um, it's showing sizes here of just different ones it has made in the past that Canva has available. If you know there's a certain poster size you want, um, you can actually just put in that size. So I'm gonna close the word that says poster. <clears throat> I know at the library we do a lot of posters that are 24 by 36 inches. So I put in 24 by 36 and I chose inches. There's also pixels, millimeters, and centimeters. Um, but I know inches for sure. And then I'm going to do copy and resize. So because it's a very similar shape to the invitation, there's not a lot that I'm going to need to do here. I might just adjust to fill up some of the space, but um, for the most part, it's really good to go. And then I'd be like, boom, there's my poster that matches the invitation. So the poster could be up in my business door or window or, you know, on an easel next to the cashier or something like that. And then the invitation could go out to, I don't know, the local chamber or maybe you've got some VIPs that are often buying your uh, materials that you want to, you know, send it to them specifically. Maybe you've got a mailing list, something like that. 
that you could send them to. Um, but that is um, one way to use some of the print templates that they have. And um, they also have, let's see, where it is. So they have custom prints. So if you're looking for, um, I don't know, I call it swag, so up to you. <laughs> um, but maybe you're looking to make some stickers or t-shirts. They also have some of these applications here. Uh, I'm going to click on stickers. So they've got a bunch of uh, templates and they even talk about their fast and free shipping up here and how they print it and everything. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll just choose this one. Again, you can see what sizes that these uh, templates are. We'll do three inches. Sure, glossy, 48, why not? And so just like all the other ones, here's the template. And um, you did great doesn't quite fit with the vibe of sneak a sneaker store. Uh, with the smiley face, I probably want, you know, my, uh, the, the logo for the store. So I'm going to go through and just make a, a few little changes here. That's a cute little smiley face, but I want to stick my logo in the middle. So I'm going to resize it to what I think might work. And again, those guides are going to pop up. Knowing this is going to be three inches, make it just need to be bigger. There we go. Um, let's see. I want to go with my fonts. Uh, that's probably going to be way too small. Ah. It has chosen to have these all capitalized or uppercase. So I'm going to select that off. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Heel love. Let's see if it is curving like it's supposed to. Okay, so that's another effect. So if I select that text and go to effects again, down here, so underneath all those uh, style effects we were playing with a minute ago, there's shape. So it's got none where it's just a flat line and then it's got curved and then you could adjust the curve uh, because it's trying to do the text as if it were in a circle. And then uh, adjust the font again on this side. And again, it's uppercase. And while you're typing it, it's going to look flat, but you can kind of see its shadow um, coming up there. But when you select off of it, it puts it in the right shape. So if I select this one again and look at the effects, you can see it's a curve, but to the other end because it's going upward instead of downward. That's the main difference there. And then you can always change the color. Uh, black and white is the main uh, color palette for this fake business. So I could really do whatever I want with the background to make it pop. Yellow's fun. In this instance, I would probably go with white text, the darker a color is. Just uh, you want high contrast as much as possible, just because it makes it easier for people to read. Uh, but I like this yellow, it looks fun. So this is just one more instance of using um, a template and then making some tweaks. Uh, I think this line here, let me see if it's an actual line. No, it's not, it's a shape, okay. Let's see if I could change it. Like their normal line elements that they have, like under lines and shapes, uh, usually you can make them like dotted or dashed, but that one looks like it's, that one's not an option here. And then again, like with all the other ones, you'll see your print options. This one just actually says print stickers. And um, 
it has the same, you know, how many, what size, what finish, and you'll just go through all those steps. And then it kind of shows you what it would look like if it were printed on a laptop somewhere. Uh, um, does anyone have any questions about what we've gone over so far? Yeah, there's been no recent questions, but if anyone has them, feel free to drop them in the chat. All right, then I what I want to do is show you, so we've pretty much gone over like the same thing over and over again with Canva. So what I wanna show you is, since this is our last class, where you can get more information. So I'm gonna go to the library's website planolibrary.org. And if you actually hover over library at the top, there's research and learn under learn. So this gets you to all of our um, online resources, our databases that if you have a Plano Public Library card, you have access to. So I want to go under, you could look under all databases, but we also have them kind of separated up here. Uh, I'm gonna look under business. I think that's where I know it exists. I scroll all the way down. We've got a couple of different ones, but one in particular I want to show you is Udemy. So um, this is a skill building, and they actually have a master class for Canva. Uh, if I remember right, it's a like, I don't know, a dozen or so hours worth of content. So there's a lot that they go over, and they even go over things like building your mission statement and your brand. They go a bit deeper into that. Um, but I show you our quick reference guide here. If it loads. And there's this. One. So this reference guide shows you step by step. Um, how to access it and then using it because you will have to create an account um, like with your email address um, and a password and then uh, then you have access to it so uh, just in case you need to check again how to access it that is there but there is a link that says access now and then you would sign in Let's see if this will work real quick Of course not, <laughs> not on the first try because I'm in the middle of trying to show you that's how that works. <laughs> so we've only had this maybe a year now, uh, access to Udemy. Okay, now I'll try again. Uh, it's through TechShare, which is the state of Texas access that we have to a number of databases. There we go. So this is what it looks like just right off the bat. So there's oh, so many classes you could look for, whether it's business, social media, marketing, there's there's many up here even just to look at, but then you can also search for topics. So I'm going to put in Canva and then show you. It's going to give a whole bunch. So yeah, this is the master class, uh, 16 and a half total hours of lecture for that you could go through. Uh, they even have one that's specific to content creation. That's another seven and a half hours, social media logos, another three hours. So there's a lot of content on here that you could learn even more. Uh, I mean, you could even simply uh, YouTube, you could search for Canva questions on there. And then Canva has their own training available through their platform as well. But this is available for free with your Plano library card. And there are tens of thousands of other classes that you could take, business classes, technology, marketing, all sorts. So depending on what you feel like you need to develop your skills on, boom, it's right here. Uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. Um, another resource you have, so if you have a small business or you're looking to start one, um, trying to find out where it is, we do have 
mentors, business mentors available through the library. If you didn't know, it is a fabulous resource and it's free. It is, um, previously they've been business executives or own their own business. And um, it's the SCORE Dallas Mentors. I'm trying to see where their information is on here. That's what the page it would be on. Sorry. Would you have some information about um, one thing that this, the SCORE mentors do? It's our monthly entrepreneurial networking meetup. So we actually just had one earlier this week. It was about brand development. And then next month in August, the Women's Business Center will be there to talk about the resources that they have available for entrepreneurs. But um, that's one thing that SCORE Dallas does for us. But they're mentor program uh, they have a mentor available pretty much every week and it's by appointment and um actually i know where i can find that information it's actually on our calendar now that i think about it because it's every week and you would just book an appointment and you can talk about um issues maybe that you're having and building your business or some maybe you're just now developing your idea and they'll talk to you about you know, what it's like to build a business plan and all the things you'll need to, you know, have a viable business. Uh, they're the experts and um, it's pretty cool. So their appointments are on Thursday. So you can see on our calendar on Thursdays, uh, score business mentoring. So when I click on it, it'll give you the information of who to contact to book an appointment. So our score mentor, it's a phone number and Don Walters, his name and his email address. Um, we can pop that into the chat just so everyone has it, but that is on our calendar. We had a couple questions here in the chat that, yeah. that you might see now. Um, the first one that might be related to in this area is, can we also learn uh, uh, InDesign on Udemy? Um, I should have left it open, but pretty sure that that is on there. If it's not, on is it Udemy or Udemy, whichever. <laughs> I feel like Personal I feel, preference, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've heard both. Um, if it's not on there, then it could be on LinkedIn Learning, which is also available through the library. So under that same research and learn business, we have LinkedIn Learning, which has a lot even more skill building and includes Adobe Creative Suite. So that has, I know that for sure has InDesign. So if not in one, then the other. Another question here says, um, I guess they're asking doing a certificate in Canva, can they do that from the Plano library? So maybe working on a certificate at a library computer? Um, so you wouldn't have access to Canva through the library because uh, that would be your own account. It would be more likely that if you were needing training, that you could probably use Udemy to uh, like work on your continuing education. I do know there are some certificates available through LinkedIn Learning, but I do not think Canva is one of them. And I don't know if it's actual certificates are available or it's just like continuing education credits. Uh, if anything, that's likely um, something that Canva will have more information about of how to get certificates for that. But I know a, a number of people have used our online resources just for continuing education credits to sort of lead to a certificate or the renewal of a certificate. Yeah, so um, one other question here. They wanna know how to print stickers. Um, so I think that was similar to how you would print a flyer and everything. If you were printing at home, you would need, you know, uh, even with flyers or invitations, you would need the particular paper to print them. I know vinyl stickers are huge. So there's just like particular paper that you would need to print on. And then if you were going through Canva themselves, uh, because they know this is a sticker template and it says print stickers, I like to think that they, uh, when they print, they know what they're doing. Um, I don't want to go through the checkout process because I'm not quite sure 
what I would need to do in order to make that happen. Um, but you could also call your any local printer and ask questions about how you would print stickers because they would be able to tell you sizing available and uh, maybe even picking and choosing between different types of paper. But any printer would be able to give you more details on that. Just about what's available, how much it costs, all of that. Because even if you have a printer at home, again, you're going to want the right materials. All right. And the last question here is, is there a way to learn how to animate on Canva in a different class? We haven't. I don't think there's much in terms of like making animations in Canva. I think they just have animated graphics. We do, however, teach um, motion graphics classes. Um, it's not in Canva. It's in After Effects, which is an Adobe product. I know we have a workshop coming up um, this fall, but I'm not sure the date yet. Our, um, our brochure is just now being printed for the fall, so I don't know the date off the top of my head. But we use After Effects is what we teach our animation classes, our graphics uh, animation graph, uh, classes on. All right, and the other question here, um, looking for a one-page handout, is that with the, the course material or something maybe on Canva? Yeah, I guess I would need to know what content you're looking for. We don't have any handouts for Canva specifically. Um, we just have the recordings of our classes on our YouTube channel and, of course, um, the resources through ah, to create a handout. So um, that would be, let's see, and they likely have templates for that too. So depending on what you're wanting to do, let's see. I have the search bar, which is nice. So if I just put a handout, let's see what comes up. They even have a one page handout. If I just click on that, what does that do? Okay, so they have examples in that search they've come back with about 150,000 template examples. Some of these look like resumes a little bit. Um, this one looks a bit more like a handout. So there are definitely templates on there, just to kind of depends on what information you have that you're wanting to put together. Uh, this would be another handout, looks like a, a product uh, menu kind of thing. But yeah, they definitely have uh, uh, some templates available for you to easily play with. All right. So um, I put the URL and a QR code up on the screen for the Canva recordings, which the recording for this one will be up sometime next week because it, it takes a few days to process on YouTube just because of how long it is. And then we also have a bunch of classes that we've done before on different business topics, including technology. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we have an After Effects one on there. I, I don't remember if we've done that one virtually or not though, uh, but you can look through those different uh, playlists and see what classes we've taught previously. And then we'll have even more coming up this fall. So just uh, keep an eye on our calendar and um, register for those classes. And you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel for Plano Public Library, and then you'll get notifications for uh, when we have new videos. Thank you, Nathan, for putting that in the chat. Yeah, the link is in the chat. That way you can easily subscribe. All right, and it is just now right after four. So unless there are any other questions, I think we're good to go. So thank you all for attending. I really appreciate it. Uh, and be sure if there are other uh, topics that you want us to teach about, you should be getting a, a survey pop up once you uh, leave the webinar. Please let us know uh, if there are any other topics you're interested in. I know there were some in the chat, so we'll take a look at those as well. Thank you so much.